Hi, we're here today at Choice Collectibles in Fairview, New Jersey, speaking with one of the Golden Age greats, Sheldon Shelley Maldoff. Is it all right if I call you Shelley? Uh, please do. <laughs> I right. prefer Shelley, yes. So, Shelley, um, how did you first get into comics? Uh, what was it that inspired you to, to draw? Uh, the earliest recollection I have is uh, drawing on the sidewalk with chalk. I was about 10 years old. And I loved cartoons. I, uh, my favorite was Popeye. Right. And I would draw Popeye all over the street. And the uh, superintendent would come along with the hose, you know, because they wash it down. And he said, you finish. He says, I'll leave your spot to last. And he left them there all day. And then at night when he clean, cleaned up, then he hosed that off. So he cleaned your canvas for you. And the next That's day you right. could start yeah. new. Yeah, but he always left it. He left it to the very end, so... And that people used to walk by and stop. Everybody was fascinated by cartoons. And, and they, when they see somebody draw, they're amazed at what's coming out of the pencil, you know? And at this point, you had no formal training, but you had an upstairs neighbor, is that right? Yeah, well, the one day this fellow came down, and uh, he saw it, and he said, uh, would you like to learn how to do a cartoon? I says, yes. He said, well, come on, come across the street, and I'll show you. So we started with a circle and uh, making it into a face and all. And uh, then uh, he says, I live in the same building as you, and if you make some drawings, you want me to look at them, knock on my door. I'm on the fourth floor, Bernie. And uh, I did, and that was Bernard Bailey, right. who uh, at that time was a high school senior. And he went into comics, and he did uh, known for the, the Spectre. Right, uh, great, beautiful Golden Age Spectre. Oh, yeah, great. He, he was very good. And years later, I sold my first drawings to national periodicals. Later DC. Right, at DC. And he walks into the room. He looks and he says, Shelley? I says, yeah. <laughs> yeah, Bernie. He says, you made it, huh? I says, I stuck to it, yes, thanks to you. And uh, we, you know, we knew each other for years and years. Did you have any formal art training after no, the... I had no formal art training at all. I would... Uh, uh, look at the comics, and I would cut all heads out, paste them on a page, and I would cut hands out, paste them on a page, and shoes, all different kinds of shoes, and I kind of made my own lessons, and uh, I would do it over and over again, feet, then hands, then faces, then, then bodies, you know. And eventually, you know, putting the whole thing together. And was this, uh, were you taking this out of the comic strips? Out of the comic strips, yeah. I'd cut them out, and make pages of hands from different styles. And I tried to do all the different styles because I felt every style had something to contribute to cartoons. Uh, it, it was the, the artist's different way of looking at things. He saw it through a different hand. When I learned a little more about drawing and Flash Gordon became popular, mm -hmm. I said to myself, this is where it's going. It's going in this direction. And so I tried to emulate Raymond Forster, Kniff, they were, to me, they were uh, above every, they were heads above everybody else. Um, Raymond in his line, it's such a beautiful line, mm -hmm. Kniff in his storytelling. Right. And uh, the way he used shadows and blacks, you saw a boat on the water, but when you looked at it, it, it wasn't a boat or water, it was just a, a form of blacks and colors, you know. He, he was an amazing artist, amazing. And of course, Hal Forster with Prince Valiant is just like a, uh, uh, you know, one of the old ancient artists who studied tapestry and knew how to do curtains and drapes and stuff like that. And I was fascinated by it. And his backgrounds were just beautiful. So I, I copied them, I looked at them, and I tried to absorb what I could from, from their drawings. And uh, it helped me, and then I tried to do it with my work. Mm -hmm. So when I got the opportunity to do Hawkman, the <clears throat> first thing I wanted to do was make it realistic, right. which I did, and it became a superhero. Now, years later... Well, no one ever did Hawkman's wings the way that you, you no, did Hawkman. No, that's what they did. Nobody did the wings the way I did. But years later, I met a lot of artists like Al Williamson mm -hmm. and other fellas, and they said to me... Um, you were an inspiration to us. I says, I was? In, in what way? He says, well, when we looked at the comic book, the original comic book was kind of amateurish. But then he says, 
pow. All of a sudden we saw a Hawkman and it, it excited us. We said, you know, we can get into comic books. It's as, it's as good as the newspapers. He says, and you made us work harder. And Al Williamson says, I owe my whole career to you. And he became a fantastic artist. That's, that's very, cool. very heavy praise indeed. Yeah. yeah. He said, but we, we didn't realize the potential of the comic book. And he said, well, you, you made us realize that this is where it's going to be. And so we made careers out of it. And then I met Joe Kubert, and I said, God, I said, you're a terrific artist. I said, did you ever think of the newspapers? And he said, yes, but he says, I think comic books is where I want to be. So. It's, it's, it was something that made it competitive, and it wasn't an amateur looking thing. It became very professional, the comic book. And because of your style, your, the, the look that you brought to it, the realistic look, they put you on a number of covers, a few of which are here behind us, actually. Right, right. Yeah. Oh, I, I must have done four or five hundred covers. And uh, what happened when um, I was working for, for Max Gaines and okay. Shelley Mayer. Right. And he came out with the uh, Flash comics, you know, introducing the Flash. And Gaines says, you know, Shelley, I want you to do the covers. I says, okay. He says, that what you do is, you know, think of a good scene that will make the, uh, the, the, fellow, the youngster buy your ma our magazine instead of somebody else's. Sure. And so I said, okay. So I did the first nine or ten Flash covers. I did the Hawkman. I did the Green Lantern. And what I did was try to think of a scene that was exciting. It had nothing to do with the inside of the magazine. And this went on for like, say, eight to 10 issues. And then uh, Shelley Mayer gets a letter from different you know, readers and they said, I, I've been wondering why the action on the cover, we don't see that story in the magazine. So Shelley said, you know, we better use a, an incident from the magazine so that when the reader looks in, he can find that story. And so every artist uh, who did the lead story ended up doing the cover. I see. So that was the end of my period of, of doing it. But I introduced the importance of covers, you know. Well, it seems they did it the wrong way. They should have taken what you had done on the cover and put it into the story. Oh, they could have made that part <laughs> of the story. Yeah, yeah. right. <laughs> yeah, well, you don't tell a writer what to do. Well, OK. <laughs> So uh, that's the way that evolved, and then you know, from then on, they would take the lead story and take an incident or whatever, and that would be the cover. And so you did the first Green Lantern cover, is that correct? The first Flash, the cover. First Flash cover, not the first Hawkman cover, because someone else had been working on that, right? Well, it was a different type of Hawkman. It right. wasn't my Hawkman. Mm -hmm. And uh, when Flash comics came out, then we alternated with the Hawkman and Flash. When they put the Hawkman. I made a, a, a little shot of Hawkman with the wings in the circle, and they found that that was, uh, that was a big hit. The readers liked it. Right. And so Mayer said, you know what? We'll alternate covers, one month Flash, one month Hawkman. And so I did, I must have done maybe 10 or more, 20 Hawkman covers. And at the time, you were also doing interior pages as well. You were doing oh, yeah. stories. I was doing the Hawkman inside, right. interior, right, right. Now, um, then they came, up, they came up with the Justice League, and Hawkman, I think, was the first president or very active in it. Was that the Justice League or the Justice Society? Justice Society. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Justice Society. Right. It started off, uh, Shelley Mayer got the idea of, he says, you know, hunters and, and people that go on safaris, they have a, a club, a hunter's club, with their trophies. Right. He says, we're going to do something like that and have all the hero, superheroes come in, meet, and talk about their adventures. That's how that started. Oh, that's, yeah. really, that's really amazing. You actually are, you helped create, created Hawk Girl, is that right? I created Hawk Girl. You created Hawk Girl. Yeah. And how did she come about? Uh, she came about uh, through the writer. Okay. See? Now, uh, I've been on... Dozens of panels, and they say, you created the Batman, you created uh, Catwoman, you created right. this. I said, it's a question, you can't, I never fight over what I created. I said, it's in the story. Mm -hmm. Now, the editor and the writer sit down, and they work very hard to come up with stories that will sell, that they think will be exciting. They're always looking for new things. And if, if they write a story about, like, the Batman, they said, this is a, 
a little alien from outer space, you know, maybe he looks like a, uh, like a cricket or whatever, you know, it's up to the artist. Right. I said, but he, they, he usually comes out of the story. Now, I, is it the writer who created it or is it the artist? The artist makes the visual. Right. The writer creates it in the first place. Right. So I said, I never made claim to anything. Okay. I said, whatever's in the story, I'm going to do. Now, some artists, in an effort to promote themselves, go around saying they, they, they created everything. Mm -hmm. Everything that's living within this <laughs> story is, is part of my creation. I said, I'm not like that. I says, now, I worked for Bob Kane for 20 years. Right. I knew him when I came out of high school. I was his first uh, uh, assistant. I said, and uh, later I, I, I left, and then I came back and did it for 20 years. Mm -hmm. He's a very different kind of person. I never knock him, and I, I go according to whatever he wanted. He came back from California, um, and he had a contract to do, we made with a studio to do uh, Courageous Cat Minute Mouse. And he said, Chelly, can you, uh, can you do it? Can you write it? Can you draw it? And I says, yeah. I says, I can do it. He says, I want you to write it and do the storyboards. I got 65 stories. So I says, okay, you know, what are you gonna pay? He says, well, I get $150 a story, so I'll split it with you. Okay. I said, well, but you're not gonna be doing anything. He said, well, but you're gonna be doing 65 stories. <laughs> That's a lot of money, you add it up. Well, in, in this business, it's piece work, you know? Mm -hmm. Let's see, I got 65 stories to do, it's so many, you know, it, it's a lot of work. Yeah. They, oh, yeah. Especially when a lot of artists are, you know, going hungry, they don't have the work. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So I did it, uh, and I did 65 stories of Courageous Cat and Mouse, and it was a very successful cartoon. Oh, it was basically Batman and Robin. Yeah, right? yeah that's what it was, yeah. yeah. To me, Bob was the creator of Batman, and he wanted, he was paying me to do the best possible job I could do that he would be happy with. And I would always say to Bob, Bob, how do you feel about this? And he would, he would tell me, mm -hmm. yeah, maybe make it more dark or something, you know, do something. Or else, oh, this is great, you know, there'd be different answers. But he felt that anybody working for him is just an extension of his thoughts in his hand. Mm -hmm. And I, I didn't, you know, I didn't phrase it that way, but I felt he's paying me, and uh, as long as he's paying me, I'll do the best I can. Yeah, period. And there, was, and there was so much Batman stuff coming out. There's no way that one man could. Have one per, uh, two people couldn't handle it. Yeah. They had to set up other uh, groups to do it. Like Dick Sprang uh, worked in, in Arizona, and he did all his work from there, and he handled certain books, and uh, because there's the, the quantity, it was too many books to print, mm -hmm. uh, too many stories to make. You got to work with Bob, you got to work with Bill Finger, you got to work with well, Charles Paris, did your inks? Bill was very well, a little erratic and uh, not dependable. Uh -huh. And so he got into trouble later years because he didn't meet his deadlines, you know. Now, a deadline is very important in any publishing business because they get press time. And they would say, I have to have this story Friday because we have press time. Mm -hmm. Well, Bill Finger was late. Many, many times he was late because that's his nature. That's his, you know, that's how a person is. Mm -hmm. Not everybody can be on time. Right. I've never been late, and that, this is my 70th year as a pro. Although I'm not too active anymore, yeah. I've, I've been in comics for 70 years, right. which is, yeah. I've, which is what I wanted and what I got, <laughs> and uh, I loved every minute of it. And, and I, to I and never be late for 70 years, you're, you're beating every single artist and writer working in the industry today. Never, <laughs> never, late for, they never late on anything. And whatever they gave me, they could call me up on a Friday and say, we need Black Hawk, we got two pages, you have to come in and do it. Mm -hmm. Whatever they told me they did, I could do it. I could change styles, I could uh, imitate another style, I could make it look like this. It was part of my uh, expertise. And I was never without work, never. And did I ever have a contract? No, I never had a contract. Did I ever work in an office? No, I never worked in an office. I started at my house in the Bronx, uh, my mother's apartment. I used a breadboard, every kitchen had a breadboard. That was my drawing board. 
And that's where I, I sat by the window, and that's where I learned to draw, and that's where I do my first uh, uh, comic books. And then uh, when I had my own home and all, always in my, my own studio, never worked in an office. Now, a lot of artists, they have to work with people. They can't work alone. Yeah. I prefer to work alone. Uh, I could I start at 8 and go to 8 at night, and it didn't bother me. But... Uh, at uh, National Periodicals, mm -hmm. you had Joe Kubert, you had uh, Kurt Swan, yeah. and you had Murphy Anderson. Oh, yeah. And they, they sat one behind the other. Uh, every day they came in, and that's the only way they could work. They, yeah. had, to have, they had to have somebody around, you see. Sure, sure. And I would stop there and see each of them, talk to each one, you know, and, uh, and that's, you know, when I, I came to the office. Oh, um you, you mentioned contracts, and I, I read a story that, that you told about um, how you actually came in with the next big thing in the 50s. You, you, went, to, yeah. Yeah. you went to Bill Gaines. Can you tell us a little about this story? Yeah. Okay. Um, Max Gaines, his father, mm -hmm. was killed in a motorboat accident on Lake Placid. And uh, I went to the funeral and all that, and everybody, you know, it was too bad. And then I came back next week, and Bill Gaines was in the office. And I said, Bill, what's going to happen? He says, well, my family gave me 150000 to play in with comic books. He says, but if we don't get an increase in sales, he says, I'm going to close it up. So I said, if I give you an idea, which I think is the next trend, Will you give me a percentage of profit? I said, only when it has a profit. Mm -hmm. uh, he says, yeah, I will. I'll do that. I says, okay, I'll be here next week with a layout of what I think is the next trend. And so I came back a week or so later with a book called um, This Magazine is Haunted right. with Dr. Death. Mm -hmm. And he loved it. And so he said, okay, I'll give you a contract. I said, remember, only if you make whatever profit, I get a percentage. I get my rate, you know, you pay yeah, right. pages. But I went to see <coughs> the lawyer, a fellow named Dave Walterbaum, mm -hmm. who was Max Gaines, his father's lawyer. Okay. And uh, he said, oh, he says, lots of luck, Shelley. He says, it's a good idea. I hope it goes. And he drew up the contract, and I signed it, and that was it. Well, I delivered the book, and uh, the key, one of the stories was done by Johnny Craig. Sure. Who became a big artist with Gaines. Yeah. And um, I said, when do you want the next one? And he said, I'll call you when it's ready, when I'm ready. Mm -hmm. And I went home, a couple of weeks go by, I called him, I said, well, what's happening? You ready for another story? He says, not yet. He says, I'll, I'll let you know. And the months will go by now. And so I'm out one day, I look at the newsstand, I see his, He's come out with different horror books, three different horror books. Mm -hmm. So I went down to your office. I says, Bill, we had a, we have an agreement. I have a contract with you. He says, Well, I decided I'm not. I don't want partners. I'm not paying commissions. I says, But we we uh, we made a deal. He says, Well, he says no. He says, I'll just pay you for pages if you want. No, that's the only way I'll, I'll accept it. Right. I said, Well, no. I says I made a deal and I want the deal. So I went down to see the lawyer, Dave Altabaum. I says, Dave, I know you a long time. What happened? I says, I signed a contract in good faith. He says, Shelley, you're young and experienced. He says, forget about it. There's nothing you can do. He says, if you sue us, he says, we'll blackmail you in the field. Oh, that scared me a little, you know? Sure. And uh, I said, I can't believe that, that you would do a thing like that. He says, well, then business is business, you know? And that was it. That was it. I never, I, I went to a lawyer and he said, Sheldon, next time get your own lawyer. He says, that's the only advice I can give you. And that, that was it. And that went on to be a tremendous uh, thing. Uh, horror was, was it. And I, I took my tiles and I sold them to force it. Right. I got $100 for each tile I gave them and I got as much work as I wanted. So that's the only benefit I had because I, I did a lot of work for Force and I had uh, four or five horror books that went and they were they were they were successful, they were good. Yeah. The, the, the you know the field went for quite a while the, the horror field. Oh sure. 
So, uh, you know, that was the story with, with Bill Gaines. He had a group of artists that were fantastic. Oh, no question. They now, when I was talking to him, I said, if I do another book, I want to get a fellow named Graham Ingalls. Mm -hmm. I want to get him. And he was known as Gasly, is that Gassley, right? Gasly, right. I said, I want to get him, because I did some work for him when he was editing a couple of books, and he's got a style that would be perfect for this. But uh, it never came to pass. Mm -hmm. It never came to pass. But he became a big artist with it, and so did uh, uh, the, the other guy. Uh, Johnny Craig. And Johnny Craig. Yeah. Eventually, uh, now you, you got away from uh, the, the DC stuff, um, and you, I know you were doing the, the, the horror for Fawcett, but then you moved into uh, corporate comics. Um, oh, you mean like Shoney's restaurants? Yeah, I mean, well, we were talking on the way over here, and one of the reasons that we loved going to Big Boys when I was a kid oh, you, was because you'd get the free, you'd, there would always be a free comic. Now, you did all those, is that right? I did that for quite a number of years. When I, went, when I retired, I went to Florida, and uh, they read a, had an article about me in the Sun Sentinel. And a fellow called me up and said, um, would you be interested in doing a, a magazine for the restaurants? I says, uh, what kind of magazine? It's a little comic that we give away every month in Shoney's Big Boy. I said, oh, I, I've heard of it. So I went over to see them. They liked you know, what I showed them. And I ended up doing Shoney's Big Boy. I did Captain D, the re fish restaurant. Okay. I did Red Lobster. Right. What, what was the What were the characters in Red Lobster? Uh, there was a crab. <laughs> okay. There was all different, uh, 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 you know, crazy, uh, lo uh, crazy. Uh, what do you call it? The crab, the lobster, fish, right. different things. There was a duck. <laughs> you know, it, it, it was popular. It was very popular. Basically everything that you'd eat in the restaurant were the main characters of that comic. For, for a Big Boy, they mm -hmm. printed about a million um, copies a month wow. and distributed them every month. And I had tons of letters from parents, from kids, from teachers. And they, they all loved the book. They said it's a very informative book. It's a fun book. And uh, th they, they enjoy reading it, and the kids love it. I got a letter from uh, students in college at Duke University. He said, every Saturday is Shoney's Day. <laughs> they go to Shoney's to see the comic book, to read the comic book. That's great. So uh, it was very, very popular. And then um, Marriott sued Shoney's over the license of Big Boy. Oh, OK. And uh, uh, Shoney's lost the suit. Mm -hmm. So we had to change it. So I came up with a, uh, a bear, Uncle Ed, Uncle Ed. Uncle the, Ed, okay. Yeah, the guy that was I was working with, his name was Ed. Okay. <laughs> and uh, we made it Uncle Ed, and Uncle Ed had a little boy, a little bear cub that went to school uh -huh. and sat with kids, you know, in, in school like, like, a, like a little boy. Yeah. And it became very popular. It became more popular than Big Boy. Uh -huh. And... Uh, they used to get uh, in the post office roughly a thousand letters a month from fans, and they said they never had anything like that with Big Boy or any other thing. It was just terrifically successful, Uncle Ed. And so um, I went there with a fellow uh, from TV and said, We'd like to do an animated thing about Uncle Ed, you know, and it would be great for Shonies. They make a lot of. The guy had shown, he says, now, we're not interested in cartoons. He says, you'll make more money from cartoons than you will from the restaurant business. Mm -hmm. He said, well, no, he says, we, we don't want to get involved with it. So they they passed on it. And now, what do you do now with your with your time? I know here at the gallery, we have some of your recreations. We have some of your famous covers. But uh, what, what are you doing with yourself? I stopped going to conventions about uh, 10 years ago or seven years ago. Um, Anything? Uh, there wasn't an incident or anything. And oh, okay. I said, you know, that's it. I've had my career, mm -hmm. so I, I don't go to conventions, except uh, San Diego when they they had a stamp um, ceremony. Yep. With the um, the post office was doing the DC superheroes. Right. Sure. So they invited me out there because uh, of the stamps. Uh, otherwise, I wouldn't go. You know, and they yeah. pay for your trip. Uh, what else are you up to these days? Otherwise, nothing much. No. I, do you do any artwork? Do you do any drawing? Any painting? Anything? Really? No, not really. 
Not really. I find my hand is not as steady as it was. I tried a few things that didn't come out to my satisfaction, so I just tore them up, and I, I don't want to do it anymore. You no, know you're not doing commissions or anything like that? No, no, no. I stopped that because I'm not happy with the result. Mm -hmm. So I'm not going to do something that I'm not happy with. Sure, sure. Well, it's a pleasure to be talking to you here today and uh, to see all your, all your work represented here. Um, well, uh, as I say, I love drawing and uh, I put everything I had into it and uh, evidently it made a mark. You know, it made a mark, and that would, that's, uh, I'm very happy about that, because I never wanted to be anything else but a cartoonist. Well, and you've, you've been a great one. Thank you very much. My pleasure. Talking with Sheldon Shelley Maldoff, one of the Golden Age greats here at Choice Collectibles in Fairview, New Jersey. For more information on the pieces available for Choice Collectibles, go to www.choicecollectibles.com. That's all for this show. Until next time, see you in the funny papers. I got a laugh out of Shelley. <laughs> a lot of people said, you know, this this type of, of story, right. it, it was crazy. But I found that that's the kind that were popular. Right. That's the ones that the people love to read because yeah. it's a fantasy. They're getting yeah. away from the real world. Exactly. Yeah. Working. Thank you for everything that you've My given pleasure. to the industry and, and to me personally because I've just always loved now, looking at your work.